Hello, Deutschlerner! Today we are going to go over this worksheet about Wechselpräpositionen, also known as two-way prepositions. They are used with the accusative case when you are changing a location or changing a state. So if you change from uh, one thing into another, uh, that is using the accusative case. Or if you are going from here to there, that is accusative. If it is stationary and not going anywhere, that is dative. Uh, first thing we want to find out, though, is what do these things even mean? So we start up here in alphabetical order. We have an. An is the first one on our list, which means on. It can also mean on to, especially if you are uh, throwing something on to something. That's uh, that's on. Uh, this is for things that are vertical. Generally speaking, there are a few exceptions to that, but mostly speaking, uh, these are going to be things that are vertical. So if you're hanging something on a wall, that is uh, accusative on to the wall. If you are hanging this, uh, if it's already hanging there uh, after you've done this, then that is dative because it's hanging on the wall. Auf is also on, but this one is for, uh, generally speaking again, horizontal things. So if something is on the floor or something is on a table, that is dative case and uses auf. If you put something onto the floor or you put something onto the table, that's accusative and it still uses auf. Hinter is behind, so that is pretty straightforward. It doesn't have anything weird about it. It's just if you're going behind something, that's accusative. Uh, if you are already there, that's dative. In is the easiest one. It just means in. It can also mean into, especially whenever you're going with uh, from one place to another with the accusative case. That is into. Neben means next to or uh, yeah, just next to. Uh, so that one's pretty easy. If you're going up to something and you're going to be next to it, uh, that is going to use the accusative. If you are already there, that is using the dative. Über, if you are familiar with anything about German, you probably know this word already, but it means over or above uh, when it's used as a preposition like we are using it today. Uh, it does have other uses, but uh, this is talking about Wechselpräpositionen, so this is kind of its uh, main use, over or above. So if you throw something over something else, that's accusative. If it's hanging above something else, that is dative. Unter is the opposite. It is under. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. This is what we call a consonant shift between uh, English and German. So we have under in English, unter in uh, German, that dt uh, consonant shift is pretty prevalent in German English translations. Uh, just a fun little linguistic note there. Uh, for is before or in front of, uh, and this is like if you're walking to the front of something, that is uh, accusative. If you're standing in front of something, that is dative. Be careful though, because for is used when you're standing in front of like a building or something like that. But if you're standing in front of a window, you're going to use an for that. So ich stehe am Fenster, I'm standing at the window. So be careful with an and for. Uh, they do have similar meanings and similar uses, but uh, they are slightly different. Zwischen is the last one, which is between. Uh, if you haven't noticed it based on the definitions that we just gave here, um, these Wechselpräpositionen are also known as prepositions of place because they explain where something is or where something is going to be or where something is coming from. They are all using these prepositions. So uh, an, auf, hinter, in, neben, über, unter, vor, and zwischen. There are a couple of songs that I use in order to memorize which ones are the Wechselpräpositionen. And, uh, uh, the first one goes an auf hinter in und neben über unter vor und zwischen wo ist das Fragewort mit Dativ wohin ist der Kusativ uh, I believe that's the Battle Hymn of the Republic is the uh, name of the tune, but uh, this reminds you that wo is used with the dative case, that's where, and wohin is used with the accusative, which is to where. So that's uh, a catchy little tune to help you memorize when to use the uh, Wechselpräpositionen with dative and when to use them with accusative. In case you don't like songs or you needed a different way to do this, we have a bunch of example sentences that I'm going to go over now. 
and these sentences all have little blank spaces in them. Uh, there are two things that you need to do for each of these sentences. First of all, you need to fill in the blank with uh, which uh, dare word or ein word or whatever it is that's missing. You need to fill that in in the blanks. And then you also need to translate this particular word, uh, this particular sentence into English. Um, if you're not a native English speaker, you could also translate this to your native language, but uh, this is meant for my students. So uh, if you, yeah, if you are in my classes, you speak English because uh, this is a, an American high school. So anyway, uh, dieser Kerl parkt das Auto neben blank space das Geschäft. Das Geschäft is normally what it is, um, but we're talking about here is whether or not this is accusative or dative. Um, so first of all, let's translate what we do know without having the word the in there. Uh, we would have this Kerl, which is a dude in German, uh, parked, which is to park, das Auto, the thing being parked, that's his car, and then neben, which is next to. So this dude is parking the car next to the store. So the question is, is this accusative or is this dative? And this one's a little bit tricky to a lot of people because parking itself is an action verb. It moves from one place to another. But the problem is here with the preposition neben, are we illustrating with that preposition in this prepositional phrase? Are we changing from one place to another? And the answer is no. We can tell this because whenever we ask the question, where did you park the car? Where are you parking the car? This is not where to are you parking the car, but where are you parking the car? So we have to use here dem Geschäft for the dative case, because again, he is parking it in a particular place. It is not going there. It is, that is the place. It is stationary. Uh, as I already mentioned, the translation, this guy is parking the car next to the store. Dieser Kerl parkt das Auto neben dem Geschäft. By the way, I didn't mention it at the beginning of this video, but if you are looking for a copy of this worksheet, it is now free on my website. Just go to the link that is in the description and you can get a copy of this for free. If you're one of my students, you should already have a copy of this. If you don't, I'm not sure why you don't, because I sent it to you like a week ago. Der Mann setzt das Kind auf blank Stuhl. So, Again, if we translate first, it's easier to understand what it is that's going on in the sentence, uh, and then we can kind of decide if we want accusative or dative here. So, der Mann, the man, setzt, sets, or places in a sitting position, das Kind, the child, and then on the chair. So, the whole sentence says, the man is setting the child onto the chair. Uh, as you can tell from not only that we have on to the chair, but also that we are moving from not on the chair to on the chair, that means that we are using here the accusative case. Stuhl is a masculine noun, so we have to use here the masculine accusative form of Stuhl, which is den Stuhl. The man uh, sets the child onto the chair. Der Mann setzt das Kind auf den Stuhl. The man sets the child onto the chair. Das Auto ist vor blank house. Vor is again the two-way preposition. Ist is the uh, verb that we need to worry about here. And this says the car is in front of the house. You can't be in the direction of something. It doesn't work like that. So this has to be stationary. Stationary is used with the, uh, the dative case, the stationary. The stationary is used with the dative case. So we use here dem house because neuter noun in the dative case for dem Haus. Der Renner läuft zwischen blank space Konkurrenten. If you don't know what Konkurrenten are, uh, those are competitors or people who compete against you. That's Konkurrenten. That could be in like a race, which is what this sentence says, or it could be in something like uh, a business. Uh, if you have some sort of uh, competition with that, um, you would use Konkurrenten for that. Uh, the point here is that it is plural. So the question is, der Renner läuft zwischen, blank space, Konkurrenten. The runner runs between the competitors. Now the question is, are we going to that position, between, or are we stationary in that position? And this is kind of confusing. Um, this is actually one of the sentences that could be both. 
Um, if you are saying that the runner is going from behind them and then runs in between them and then continues on past them, that is accusative. If you are saying they were in the middle of them and then they move on and then they go past them, that's still accusative. If, however, you are all three, there's a, a runner on your left, a runner on your right, and you running in the middle, if you are running like that and you're running in a row um, and you're all staying in that same position, that is then dative. So this one you could use either the accusative case D or the dative case Dane. So either one of those would be correct in that sentence. In number five, we have ihr, Vater, stellt die Tasse unter blank Tisch. Ihr Vater stellt die Tasse unter blank Tisch. Stellen is a verb that is similar to setzen in that it indicates already with the verb itself that we have to use the accusative case. So setzen requires an object and that object is being moved from one location to another. That's what the verb setzen does. The same thing is true here with the verb stellen, which moves the verb, moves the, uh, the direct object, die Tasse in this sentence, from one place to another place. So in this case, we are putting it under the table for some reason. So uh, this is masculine, and we just mentioned that it's accusative because we're moving the, the cup to that position. Unter den Tisch. The whole sentence says, her father puts or places the cup under the table. Stellen usually means that you are placing something in a standing position, and since cups stand on a table or under a table in this sentence, then we have to use here Stellen. Uh, Nummer 6. Der Junge fährt in blank Stadt. Fahren is the verb to drive, and if you are driving somewhere, you usually use the accusative case. So if you're driving into the city, that's accusative. If, however, you are driving around inside of the city, you would probably use the separable prefix herum so that it makes it clear that that's what's happening. Since we don't have that uh, prefix herum at the end of the sentence, we know that this should be used with the feminine uh, and accusative die Stadt. So the boy is driving into the city as opposed to he's driving around within the city. Uh, that would be dative if you were doing that, but this one says, uh, based on not having that separable prefix, that we are in fact using the accusative. Die Frau sitzt vor blank. This probably is a dead giveaway just because I have an extra blank space after the uh, first blank, um, but this sentence here, uh, sitting, sitzen, that is, that verb there, uh, indicates that we are not going anywhere. Setzen would mean that, like if you're setting yourself down, that's the reason that setzen is reflexive, is because you have to have an object with setzen. Sitzen, on the other hand, is an intransitive verb, meaning that it does not take a direct object, and die Frau is then sitting in a particular location. She's not going somewhere. Uh, so the woman sits in front of the students. The students here are plural, which is why we change this to den Schülern. So die Frau sitzt vor den Schülern. The woman sits in front of the students. And uh, there is uh, that sentence. For some reason, I translate it in the answer key as uh, standing in front of the students, but sitzen is the verb. So Clearly, that's not what should be on the answer key. I guess I'll have to change that for the version that's on my website. Nummer 8 is Der Junge fährt in blank Stadt herum. Remember earlier when I told you that if you were driving inside of the city and driving around in the city, you would have to be using herum at the end of the sentence? Well, that's exactly what's happening here, which means that I have already told you the answer should be dative. He is a driving around within the city. He is driving around in the city. Wir haben einen Panzerschrank hinter blank in blank house. So we got two blanks here. The problem is, how do we uh, figure out if this should be uh, accusative or dative? First thing that I always do is I look at the verb. The verb in this sentence is haben. Haben cannot possibly move things from one place to another, okay? Haben has to mean that you have something where it is. You can't have something in a direction of something. So this tells us this is dative. Bild is a neuter noun, so we have to use here einem Bild. 
house is also a neuter noun, so when we use in, we are using here the dative case again, unserem, in our house. For those of you who don't know, a Panzerschrank is a safe, as in like something that you can lock up your valuables inside of. So we would say here, we have a safe behind a photo in our house. Wir haben einen Panzerschrank hinter einem Bild in unserem Haus. Nummer 10. Seine Mutter steht auf blank Bett, um den Deckenlüfter zu putzen. So stehen, if you uh, were paying attention earlier with stellen, stellen means to place something in a standing position. Stehen means that it's already in that position. Uh, your mom in this sentence, or his mom, seine Mutter, is uh, the verb. Oh no, seine Mutter is the one standing somewhere. The somewhere she is standing is auf the bed. Uh, auf, in this case, is being used with the dative to indicate that she is standing there. Uh, his mother is standing on the bed. And uh, it says, in order to clean the ceiling fan, because I felt it needed to have some sort of an explanation as to uh, why she's standing on the bed. So, his mother is standing on the bed in order to clean the ceiling fan. Seine Mutter steht auf dem Bett, um den Deckenlüfter zu putzen. Das Mädchen hängt das Poster an blank Wand. Uh, I gave this example when I first started this whole thing telling you that if you are hanging something onto something, that is then using the accusative case with this preposition. Wand is a feminine noun, so we have to use D in the accusative case. The girl is hanging or hangs the poster onto the wall. Meine Schwester führt das Pony über something about a Brücke. Führen is to lead. The thing being led is das Pony. If you are leading something, uh, over the bridge in this case. So we need here the accusative because it's being brought over the bridge. It wasn't on the bridge before. It wasn't over the bridge before. Now we're taking it from one side of the bridge to the other side of the bridge. That is using the accusative case. My sister is leading the pony over the bridge. Meine Schwester führt das Pony über die Brücke. Ihr Freund legt sich zwischen blank und blank. Her friend lays himself down between this and that. Uh, we have Sofa und Sessel. Legen is a transitive verb. That's the reason we have this sich here, is because it requires some sort of object. So you can lay something down, um, and in this case we are laying himself is what's being laid down, so we use here the reflexive. Uh, obviously you can lay anything else down, like if you lay a pencil on a table, uh, that's also using the verb legen, but not reflexively. Zwischen is between, and so he's laying himself down between the sofa and the armchair. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's what he's doing. Since we are using the sich here, this indicates that he is laying himself that direction, not that he is already lying there. That would be the verb liegen, which is in the next sentence. So, this one has to be used with the accusative case. So we say, das Sofa and den Sessel, because these are a neuter noun for sofa and a masculine noun for Sessel. Her boyfriend, or just friend, doesn't really say here. Her boyfriend lays himself down between the sofa and the armchair. Ihr Freund legt sich zwischen das Sofa und den Sessel. In Nummer 14, I give you the exact opposite verb, which is liegen. Liegen indicates that you are already there, and therefore has to be used with the dative case when you're using a two-way preposition. So, Küchentisch is a kitchen table. This happens to be then dative and masculine, dem Küchentisch. So the dog is lying under the, ta uh, under the kitchen table. Der Hund liegt unter dem Küchentisch. The dog is lying under the kitchen table. Der Kalender hängt an something Kühlschrank. This sentence is the opposite of the one that we had earlier of the girl hanging the poster onto the wall. Hanging can be a transi uh, transitive verb, in which case it's regular in the past tense, but it can also be an irregular verb in the past tenses, and then it's used as an intransitive verb, meaning that it does not have a direct object. So, der Kalender is the thing hanging. Where it is hanging is on the refrigerator. So, 
full sentence would be the calendar is hanging on the refrigerator and on is then going to be used with the dative case here so we say dem kühlschrank der kalender hängt an dem kühlschrank the calendar is hanging on the refrigerator as I mentioned earlier, if you want a copy of this worksheet, there is a link in the description where you can download this for free off of my website. If you are one of my students, you should already have your own copy of this and you shouldn't need to be downloading someone else's. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. This is uh, Herr Antrim and uh, thank you for paying attention to this wonderful worksheet. If you want more stuff about German language, you can check me out at germanwithantrim.com. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.